everyone, it's me, Tracy Mooney, uh, senior editor from Generation Q Magazine and roving reporter for The Quilt Show. And I am here at International Quilt Market in Houston. And I am here with Maddie Haynes from Quilt Smart. Hi, Maddie, how are you? Hi, Tracy, I'm fine. Thanks for having me. So, I heard that you are bringing Marie Webster back. Can you tell <laughs> our audience a little bit about who Marie was and what yeah. you're doing? Yeah, well, Marie um, had a pattern company in the 1900s, the early 1900s, called Practical Patchwork. And one of the very cool things that I think about is she started it in her 40s. So, not only being a, a modern woman, uh, she was also a little bit older to have a, a company as a woman back then. And I started my company, Cool Smart, when I was in my 40s. So we have a little bit of a connection there, I think. But um, I think that she had beautiful, beautiful patterns. She was known then as a modern quilter. Really? Yes, and she was uh, very popular on the lecture circuit, and uh, she went uh, would take a train, you know, couldn't get on a plane then, to right. take her lectures all over the country, and wow. she was really quite a quite a modern entrepreneur. Wow. So I think there's a lot to that too that is really cool. She published her patterns in um, a, a newspaper or a magazine. Yep, in the Ladies Home Journal. And oh, um, some the editor had seen one of her quilts and said he must have them. And so she sent him a few and started with this one here, American Beauty Rose, was mm. the first one that she sent. So that was the first pattern she did. And then he wanted more and more. And like um, this one, Daisy and Tulips were both cons called pillow patterns. And they were also published. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Cherokee Rose, Poppy, and Sunflower. Wow. And uh, this one's called Gay Garden. This was her last quilt that she published with that one. And as she went along, um, the 30-some years she was in business, the patterns got a little bit freer than the first one, mm -hmm. which was very structured, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Now, her granddaughter, uh, Rosalind, and I have connected. And really? Ros yeah, Rosalind lives in California, and we can <laughs> Connected because of all of this because what our what I thought is these patterns should be easier to make the way that you made them and this is in Marie's words not a direct quote but in her words you um, the, her instructions said uh, cut out fabric needle turn and quilt and bind that was like the whole right. thing. Well, back then, everybody understood knew how to do that. What that was about, mm -hmm. and um, also, you know, like darning socks, and we don't do those things today. <laughs> so, um, how can you make this easy? Because that was very tedious. So, what we did is we print interfacing, and in the pack, you get all these different interfacing pieces for each of oh, the different Oh, look at that for blocks. all the petals and everything. Yeah. So there's the poppies. And this is the sunflower. I can open that up and show you a little oh, look more detail. So there's always, what we do is we print this on interfacing. It's a lightweight interfacing. It is very light in your quilt, mm -hmm. but it's strong enough to sew on. So okay. you're going to stitch on the solid line, trim on the dashed line. And here, I'll, I'll show you this. It's a little easier to see. So we've got this against the fabric, and I've stitched on the solid line. Oh, you can see that? see that on the back. All right. Yep. And then we're going to trim on the dash line, like that. Okay. And then and you don't have to be perfect. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think perfection is a little... Uh, <laughs> overrated? A little, a little overrated. We talk a little too much about perfection. But because I am not a perfect person or a perfect quilter, I think it's kind of humorous that I own a company that makes things right, that makes really will make it perfect. <laughs> if you want it to be perfect. Right. So all I'm doing is turning, and then you can take, there's some nice little tools we have out there now that if you want to really round out mm -hmm. the edges. But what that gives you is, what I basically just did was um, a needle turn without right. doing it by hand and with a, you know, real tedious. So mm -hmm. the edges are all turned under beautifully. No, I'm curious. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. I was just guessing the next step because I know what your products do. So uh -huh. <laughs> I, I made the Mondo bag recently, so I, I've actually gotten to try the interfacing and I just love how mm -hmm. um, lightweight it is yep. and it made it 
um, stitching together a lot of squares really easy. So go well, ahead. And yeah, and the Mondo bag is a slightly different technique, but the fusible interfacing and what you were referring to is that mm -hmm. it's fusible. So there's little tiny little nubs, nubs on there. that you can feel just a little bit. Yeah, and that is the next step to fuse it down. But that you know we every time I do a new pattern, I think well, I wonder if it really needs to be fusible or could it just right. be interfacing? Every single one, and we have over 40 patterns. I end up no, it, it needs the fusible, and uh, mm -hmm. it's just it's uh, our logo is uh, classic old modern methods, and they didn't have fusible interfacing no. 100 years ago. No, they didn't. Um, so that's one of the joys that we get to have. Uh, we get people saying to me, "That's cheating," and I say, "If you had it, if you had this, if they had this 100 years ago, they wouldn't be doing it by hand." Right. You know, they started sewing by machine. That's when true. The as soon machine, as you know. as soon as they got the sewing yeah. machine, they started. Yeah doing it all by machine. I mean, so, as soon as we got the rotary cutter, we yeah. stopped using scissors. Yes, we yeah. <laughs> And cardboard so. templates. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so when you do this, can you, mm -hmm. do you have to stitch it down by machine? If you're a hand applicator, would you want to do it by hand? That's a great question because you can definitely do it by hand. Mm -hmm. You've already got the needle turn part right. done. That's the hard part. Now you just applique it down and you can applique it by either, what I use is a very simple zigzag stitch. Okay. And we have all these fancy machines now. Do you make now it tiny? Do all this. I do. The tiny, the narrower you make it, the more invisible it will be. So if what you're looking for is a um, hand stitched look, Mm -hmm. which basically was an invisible look, mm -hmm. then you can use invisible thread and you can um, use a very narrow zigzag. Mm -hmm. And these quilts here, I believe every one of these is done that way, mm -hmm. where it's with invisible right. thread. I just did one the other day though where I matched the thread. Mm -hmm. So in a silk thread works really nice. Oh, because it varies it, right there. Oh, it does. It just, and the new Aurifil 80 weight might be really good too. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that's just great. And um, so those are so you can do it that way, or you can hand applique. And I have hand applique a lot of blocks too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to have a hand project sometimes. Yes, so. it is. Is. And then this way uh -huh. is um, this is a quilt smart product and it's a panel that's sold on about a yard long and you get your waves and you do the exact same thing you turn it so this is turned in the oh, interface that's great. but she Marie Webster used the wave in several different quilt patterns mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool she like did swags too didn't she she did and we have mm -hmm. those in the in the American Beauty Rose she has those around right. that and we have those in interfacing too oh that's great so the cool thing about the sampler, well, there's lots of cool things about it, but <laughs> the um, each of these blocks can then, if like let's say you fall in love with the sunflowers, well this this block can be made into a big quilt with all sunflowers. And um, when we first started doing this, I took the quilt that Marie had designed with the American Beauty Rose and the they call it the festoon border. Mm -hmm. I took that and I duplicated it just like she did. Oh, and by the way, we do we have very kind permission from her granddaughter to do all this. That's great. That's great. <laughs> so, um, and she's very enthusiastic about it, and we talk all the time, and that's that's a wonderful relationship. And I must tell you about the great great granddaughter too. But in any case, so I duplicated this, and then I talked to her granddaughter Rosalind about that, and I said. I feel the need to duplicate every quilt as Marie made it. And she said, well now Maddie, Marie may not have thought that, her grandmother. Mm -hmm. She says she was very, very modern and she may have thought that you could be a little, you know, mm -hmm. do something on your own. So basically Rosalind gave me permission to do pretty much whatever, you whatever I wanted. <laughs> so that being said, she has two Rosalind has two granddaughter daughters that are considered modern quilters. Oh really? One of them and her great great granddaughter came to the celebration where they have for Murray Webster every year at the mm -hmm. Quilters Hall of Fame in Marion, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I saw myself at a booth similar to this teaching Marie Webster's great great granddaughter how to turn a little flower like this. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah, and I got all overwhelmed and everything. I and it was, did. It was really cool, though. It was that's very cool. really great. So, kind of a come full circle. Full so, circle. her great-great-granddaughter, whose name is Emma Bobro, made a block like this. 
base of her grand her great great grandmother's design with a modern technique. So that was very cool. Fantastic. What a great thing. Um, so finally, why don't we just switch over here? Because I am okay. so struck by um, this Lone Star pattern, and I think that's definitely a pattern that um, is kind of a little bucket list for me. But I've always thought that it's been too difficult for me to attempt it. Tell me about how we could make, make this it easy. tonight. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Skip really? dinner. <laughs> we'll make it tonight. No, really, this this particular quilt. Um, is uh, this on the back we just show the steps but basically you are fusing rectangles to a piece of interfacing and then you put another rectangle across it and flip it stitch on the line you're always okay you're always working on the line because it's, it's printed so it's there it's like if you think of a pattern a dress pattern mm -hmm. in tissue paper it has right. lines on it but you don't actually sew on that you just use it you for just cut it cutting yeah what we do is we put the lines on the patterns that you actually sew on you fold on the lines trim on the lines stitch on the lines so this is very easy in that and you made the mondo bag yes I did. so with the mondo bag you're fusing squares fusing it down, down. And, folding it. Yep, folding stitching. and stitching. And the Lone Star is very similar to that, except that you're putting two fabrics together and stitching a diagonal line, but the diagonal's printed for you. So you're never, and you use rectangles. Some people get confused when I talk about the Lone Star with rectangles. You never cut a diamond shape really? at all. No. So it is very cool. It's one of our most popular patterns. I bet. And you said it was on your bucket list. So yes. It's an easy one to cross off. It'll really? take about <laughs> six to eight hours. Get out. Nope. I can't even believe that. Okay, that's Less great. Less than a weekend. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. I love hearing all the stories about Marie Webster and all those personal stories that you had to share about creating these wonderful patterns so that her legacy can continue with the newer quilters who maybe didn't know who she was. Yeah. Well, thank you very much thank for you. having me, Thank Tracy. you so much. Thanks.